All right, hi everyone, and welcome to a brand new video tutorial. So in this video, we're going to specifically discuss deleting data from the Firebase real-time database using Python. So I have a playlist and it's a series of Firebase CRUD tutorials with the real-time database. So if you're interested in other aspects of CRUD, such as creating, reading, and updating the data, be sure to check that out, it will be linked below. Otherwise, you can watch this video as a standalone video if you only want to learn about deleting. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is console.firebase.google.com. This is where we see our Firebase project. Now these are, these are my sample projects. We can go to this one, which is the one we're using for our tutorial series. All right, so we're using the database feature. I also have videos on using the authentication and a video on using storage with Python. So if you're interested in these features of Firebase, you can check those out. Okay, so this is the database. This is some sample data that I have. Now I'm going to discuss the data in a minute. But first of all, let's just go back to the Python, to PyCharm, and just explain what we need to do to get started. All right, so this is PyCharm. Now, I know you can see some lines of code and you're like, where did this come from? I'm just going to explain this very quickly because I already have a video explaining these in depth in my create data video for, from this playlist. But I will skim it in all cases and it should be pretty clear for you. So we're using the Firebase library. So it's a Firebase wrapper API and it's going to help us with interacting with the Firebase features such as authentication, storage, and the database. So this is the library that we want. You can install it by going to the terminal and saying pip install Firebase. And then I already have it, so requirement already satisfied. However, in your case, you would probably wait for it to be installed. All right, now these credentials right here are the configuration credentials for Firebase. You would get them from your console. So you would get them by adding an app to the Firebase project. Again, if you need a step-by-step -step detailing of that, you just have to refer to my creating data in the, uh, in the first tutorial where we actually create our first project, create the database, and perform these steps. Okay, so the next part is initializing a Firebase app, and we do so with this line of code right here. And the final step is actually connecting to the Firebase database part. So we're using the database, not storage, not authentication, database. All right, so now we can actually get started. Now let's go back to the data and actually explore it and explain what is going on. Now we have two to-do lists, and each to-do list is, let me just expand, each to-do list has three days in it, so Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And for each day, there are certain tasks. So it's just a simple to-do application, some sample data, you could say. So let's say for Monday, we have two tasks. One of them is writing a paper, and the deadline is 4 p.m. The other one is a pull request, and the deadline is 3 p.m. All right? Now, what is to-do list B? Okay, so to-do list B contains the actual same information that to-do list A contains. However, the difference being that in to-do list B, we have an automatically generated key that Firebase provides us with. So when you push data to the database, you can either create your own key. So in this case, paper is the key, and these are the children for paper. Or you can just push the data, and then Firebase itself would create a key based on the timestamps, and then you, you would have to, um, and then that would just be already in your database generated by Firebase. So in the first, so there are two cases for deleting data. So you either know the path you're, you have for your data or you don't because you don't know the ID. Now, if that seems confusing, just hold on because you're going to see it visually and then you're going to actually understand it pretty well. So let's just ignore to-do list B right now. Let's focus on to-do list A and learn how to delete data from this to-do list. All right, so let's get started. Basically, very similar to the update function that we have in in Firebase, in the Firebase uh, API. So we just have to create a path, first of all, with the child function. So db.child to do list a dot child uh, Monday dot child deadline. Uh, no, we have paper first paper dot remove now what does this do this would delete the entire paper node with its children as well so that will just have to happen all right so let's just run it 
All right, so we're done. We go back here. Paper is gone. Now we only have one task in Monday. All right, so this is how you delete any node. Deleting Tuesday by just simply, let's just say, if we don't want this, we want to delete all of Tuesday. It's essentially the same thing. All right, so we go back here. Tuesday is gone. Okay, so everything else is just simply changing the path by using the child function. So use the child function sequentially to create a path to the data that you want to remove. Now, what if I want to delete deadline 2 a.m. from project in Wednesday? Okay, so I can do that, right? Let's just note something. Uh, what was the... Let's just see. Okay, so it's project. Dot deadline. No, dot uh, child deadline. Okay, so if we run this, we go back and we can see that the entire node that had the deadline child was gone. Now, the reason that is, is because that node is only made up of its children nodes and it has only one child. So when that child is gone, the node itself ceases to exist. So let's just add some other data here. So let's say details and let's say uh, important. All right. So now we have two child nodes for volunteer. So if I go back and instead of project, I try to delete from volunteer and I want to delete the deadline for it. I just run it, I go back to Firebase, and the deadline child is gone, however, volunteer remains. So this is how you can note the difference between deleting the only child of a node, consequently deleting the node itself, versus deleting one child out of several. Also, we know how to delete the, an entire node the same way we just did with Tuesday. All right, so this is pretty much what you have for the remove function. So to do list B, let me highlight why I have to do list B and why it's important to work with these generated IDs and how we can work with them. So here we go. So this is to do list B. Now, if I want to access this deadline, so it's going to be db.child to do list B dot child Monday dot child. But how do I specify this? Assuming I don't know this. So if I'm developing an application, there's probably no way for me to know beforehand what this is going to be. So how do we get it? The, the process here is that we have to perform one, an extraction, and two, we have to actually perform the deletion using the key that we extracted. So let's do it. Let's just try it out and try to delete the um, deadline from this one, from Monday, from the paper. Okay, so let's just comment this out. We can leave it. All right, so let's say um, tasks, or let's call it Monday task. Monday task equals db dot child to do list b dot child Monday dot get. Okay, so the get function returns the children of this specific node. So what this is going to return, it's going to return these two different um, objects right here and their respective children. So to iterate over these, so we can say for task in Monday tasks dot each, you cannot iterate over them without using the each function, print task dot val and print task dot key. Okay, so let's just run this. Now here's what we get. We get the two different objects within the uh, the child Monday from to do list B and their their data. So we have their ID. So when we printed task dot key, we got their key, the generated key, and we have the data within them. Their child nodes, which is deadline one p.m. name paper or deadline three p.m. name pull request. So this is how we're going to access things. So if I specifically want to delete the deadline from the object that is named paper. So from this object, this is the one I want. We have to say, if task.val 
sub, all right? Why do we say sub? Because this is a Python dictionary, meaning we can access key value pairs using the actual string key. So it's sub name, and that name is equal to paper. All right, now what do I do here? Let's just, let's keep it at printing now. So you can't really understand. Wait, I, I know I messed up before. Okay, now. I forgot the strings here. Okay. So now we get the only object which has the name as, as paper, and this is the key. So instead of printing it out, what we want to do is save it in a variable. So key is task.key, meaning we're saving the key for the object that has the name as paper. Now that we have it, we can just continue to do what we were doing before. So db.child to do list b dot child uh, monday dot child key dot child deadline dot remove all right let's run it now so we're done and deadline is gone so this is how we were able to access it this is how we were able to build the path that originally we knew how to do in to-do list A because let's say we had the sort of schema for the data and we were aware of where different data objects would be located. However, in the second part, we were not completely aware of the actual IDs we needed. So what we performed is that we extracted the IDs and then performed the remove on that ID using the path that we just extracted. All right, so that's pretty much it for deleting data in Firebase real-time database using the Firebase library. So if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down below. Thank you very much for watching and leave a like if you enjoyed. Bye-bye.